I was browsing through your videos and saw you did a video on lake and sea creatures. After listening to it, I thought you might like to hear the story of a man that I used to be close friends with. I used to be close friends with a guy who managed a small team of recreational divers that would often go out on lakes and practice doing deep diving, compression stopping, and other things. Lake water is vastly different than the ocean, which is why this was more aimed at beginners looking to get their feet wet, literally, into diving, and the basics. The man's name, who I will mention, was named Earl. Earl had done many sea diving expeditions, but eventually transitioned to freshwater diving as he got older. I was good friends with the man. Very good friends, actually. Unfortunately, he decided to take his own life last year, in March of 2019. I thought it would be good to share with what he shared with me. On one of his last, if not his last, freshwater diving expedition, he and a couple of students went freshwater diving in one of the Great Lakes. I can't remember which one. Forgive me. I think it was Superior, but I can't quite remember. He claims to have been attacked violently by what he described as a part marine crocodile, part creature of the Black Lagoon. This man was not a fearmonger by any means and was a very honest person. He did not show fear of the water, and safety was his number one mantra before diving. He knew the cons and knew the risks. This had scared him so bad that he quit his diving expeditions altogether entirely. Because we were so close, he was one of the few people he had talked about what he had seen that day, saying they were exploring part of the bottom, using specialized metal detectors for treasure hunting when this thing came out of a pocket at the bottom and nearly ripped his leg right off his body. Had he not moved just in time, it would have. It followed him closely to the surface as he retreated in fear, grabbing onto him and trying to drown him. It gashed at his back several times just trying to grab onto him and pull him down. Upon getting back up on the boat, he required severe medical attention immediately. His wounds were not life-threatening, but did require stitches from bleeding out and possible infection. I wasn't made aware of this until probably four months after the incident happened in the summer. He told me briefly what I just told you above, and that was that. I didn't want to push for more details than necessary, because he seemed so shook about the experience that he had. That's when he told me he was done diving altogether, and he could have really endangered the lives of his students and friends. I didn't hear from him much after that, only through text now and then but it was still minimal, not like it used to be. The years prior, we would go out and do stuff together, like hiking, eating at good restaurants, looking back at it. He actually never took me diving, to which I'm surprised it didn't happen. Everything happens for a reason, I guess. Then 2019 hit. I would reach out to him, but not hear anything from him. And then March comes. I got a phone call from his girlfriend at the time, who called me, and let me know that he hung himself the night previous. He had developed a strong drinking problem in the months prior to his death. I don't know if what happened to him on the last diving adventure had anything to do with him drinking and ending his life. I would like to think there's no connection. He never once talked about depression, and always seemed like a lively and active busy man. He would have been the perfect definition of not having enough time to be depressed. Tragedy aside, I felt it would be best if you knew his final diving account. When I was seven years old and camping at a lake with my family, I was swimming alone in the water when I saw what I believe was a lake monster. It was so large that it was easily three times bigger than I. It had a massive head, dark red skin, and huge long fins at its side. It had teeth that were long and pointed, as sharp as knives. I screamed like a little girl. It slowly inched closer and closer to me. I yelled to my family and I swam for my life. I couldn't believe it. I was so frightened that I swam as fast as I could back to my mother and father at shore. My parents were screaming at me, knowing I was in danger. 
My dad, bless his heart, in his full non-swimming clothes, jumped in head first and swam towards me to rescue me. He gets me and pulls me out of the water. I'm hyperventilating and I'm trying to explain what I just saw. And I was worried that being seven years old, they wouldn't take what I had to say very seriously. Well, they did to an extent. My mother tried to explain it by saying I just saw a big fish, but I told her this one was going to eat me. Looking back, it kind of reminded me of some sort of crocodile, maybe a freshwater crocodile, but I ain't ever seen a crocodile that looked anything like this did. This occurred at Louisville Lake in Texas. You know what they say, everything is bigger in Texas, even the lake monsters and carnivorous fish. I got the chance about 10 years ago to go deep sea diving off the coast of Mexico, where I firmly believe I saw what looked to be a plesiosaur. We were diving out and probably around 20 miles off the coast with me in the water and my other three diving partners getting ready for their descent. I had ventured probably no more than 50 yards away from the boat and, of course me being me, was the first one in the water. I could see out clearly in the water. The open ocean, there was this large shape coming in my direction. My three other diving partners were still on the boat, I think taking their time getting out to the water. I continued to watch this large shape, in awe, figuring it was a very large fish, possibly a sunfish. Well, I was partially right, as it got closer and began turning east to change directions, what I believed to change direction with the current, actually. That's when I got a pretty good look at the shape of it. And it looked exactly like that of a plesiosaurus, a rather long neck with four smaller fins. It's like I was living in Jurassic Park. The thing about plesiosaur is they are a very distinctive shape. There is no mistaking or misidentifying them. That silhouette, that shape will always be with me. I was amazed at what I was seeing and couldn't believe that I was the only one seeing this amazing sight. I felt for my diving partners who still remained upon the boat. The whole entire sighting lasted maybe 30 seconds, but it felt much longer. Once it disappeared from view, I quickly swam back to the boat, yelling about what I had just seen, in total amazement. I thought it was incredible, breathtaking, an experience to be had. I boasted about how I just got to witness something that we all thought to be extinct. A couple of my friends believed me, but one of them just thought I was a loon and making it up. I know what I saw. There is no mistaking such a shape like that off in the water. The distance of this animal was far away, but not so far that I couldn't make out or distinguish what it was. It's like if a great white shark were to swim towards you and then turn into the current. From a good distance, a shark is distinctively a shark. There's no misidentifying it. They have a very unique shape and size. You don't have to be 20 feet away to get an estimate on the size and type of animal of those. The same applied to this scenario. Its neck and tail were very long, and it had a smaller head than what I envisioned, but maybe if I was closer, I could see more of the intricacies. From my distance, it looked to be a green, blue, gray color. The discovery of such a large beast from 40 million years ago makes for even more interesting discoveries that'll lead to more understanding of our prehistoric past. And because so much of the world's diversity, especially in the deep sea, can be found in the ocean floor, the discovery of so many ancient organisms will only fuel the quest for understanding this crucial step of cycle on our planet. This alone is the reason I strive for deep dives and to be pushing for more exploration. Good day. I have been wanting to tell my story for some time, but I have held back because it's so crazy. I have had to convince myself that I'm not crazy and I was not hallucinating. Let me give you some backstory before I get into the nitty gritty. This was in May of 2015. I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time and we were driving down the coast of Washington, Oregon and down into California, all along Highway 101 which travels down the coastline of these three states. One of our favorite things to do is to go out onto the beach at nighttime. We have done this more than once, had no problems ever, 
with bums, police, anything. Nobody ever gives us problems. There's just something so enticing about the moonlight shining out over the vast empty ocean with nobody around and the tide continuously rising. It's a beautiful experience. At the time, I believe we were in Southern Oregon. I can't tell you what beach or by what town because I don't know. We just pulled off to a spot in a spontaneous moment. We just pulled off the side of the road to a spot that had beach access, grabbed our blanket and our hoodies and ran off into the beach to watch the tide come in. Luckily for us, there was still plenty of space for us to sit and watch the night sky. Even better, it was a clear night with a bright moon illuminating the night sky, paving this out of this world landscape. My favorite thing about night adventures on the beach is that there's nobody else around, so that was truly something. We get set up with our blanket and we sit down to start cuddling and talking about how beautiful the beach is. It's windy as can be, which is why we wore our hoodies. I don't think there's a beach in the world that isn't windy. We were just watching the waves crash onto the shore, making small conversation. Maybe 10 minutes go by, and my girlfriend is like, hey, let's build a fire and roast some marshmallows. We had some kindling and firewood in the back of the car that we kept for such occasions. She wanted me to go run and get it. It didn't take much convincing. I was agreeing. After a quick kiss, I started to get up when both of our attention just happened to be pulled out in the distance where we saw this shape climb out of the sand. It happened so fluidly and quickly. To make it easier to understand, this is exactly what my girlfriend, whom I talked to later about it, and verified we saw the same thing. A person, a pitch black figure, climbed their way out of the sand and run towards the water, reached the water, and continued running into the water, not even phased by the oncoming waves, until they were fully submerged underneath the waves and never came back out. I hadn't even stepped off the blanket yet when my girlfriend and I in unison rush up, grab our blanket, and head back to the car in total fear. We get the car started and we got out of there, flying down the highway. We didn't say a word for probably a half an hour, maybe longer. I was the one to break the silence with asking her what she saw, where she calmly explained to me, I don't know how, but she did, what I had just typed to you. I knew as soon as she told me that, I wasn't hallucinating. We were not under any substance, alcohol, weed, nothing. 100% sober, not sleep deprived, no pills, nothing. This was maybe 50 feet away from us. This figure, which was totally pitch black, ran out onto the sea, continued going until fully submerged. What? Why? Even in the dim lighting that the moon provided, had it been a person, we would have seen colors of clothing or some sort of shape. But this, it was just the silhouette of a person. There was no defining extra shapes like clothes on them or anything. It was super creepy. Then for this figure or person to run not only into the water, but into it until fully underneath by the waves. We were seriously mind screwed. We debated and talked about it for hours afterwards, speculating what it could have been. I think my girlfriend at the time concluded that we saw a ghost of a sailor who had died and was running back to sea. I don't believe in that. Besides, why would a ghost interact with our world like that? literally digging their way out of sand like it did in full view of us and running into the water. It wasn't some transparent apparition either. That's my super creepy night experience at the beach. Make of it what you will, but I promise I'm not crazy. We both saw this and we can both testify to this day that this is truth. It all started for me when I was a young boy as I remember watching an educational program about animals living in caves on TV. The idea got me thinking about how many life forms that we see on this earth. And when I got older and started going on deep diving missions and saw a living plesiosaur, my heart felt to fear. I've been doing several deep sea dives with various hobbyists, friends, and likes, including scuba diving and deep sea fishing. In the depths of the ocean, Deep water often causes a change in the food chains 
that may have the effect of changing the distribution of species and possibly even causing them to go extinct. It's amazing how such incredible creatures can live in this very harsh environment, yet remain seemingly unchanged. My friends and I have only just begun to learn more about the life on the deep and the many ways we can protect them from these dangerous predators. One of my friends is passionate about conservation and has been working with scientists worldwide to better understand life in the deep sea. And I'm glad the opportunity to work together made the most sense for me. What type of animal lived on the ocean floor around 500 million years ago? I can assure you that I have some interesting things to say about that, but I'll save that. It's easy to think that the life forms living on Earth today would have been extinct long before the dinosaurs. However, some of the most complex and important structures we see are formed when we find animals at the bottom of the sea. It takes thousands of years or longer for them to die. This is why I believe we saw the plesiosaur. Living at such depths and so many places to hide that the ocean offers, it would be very easy for elusive species of animals to hide and mask themselves to not be known to mankind. This is why we choose to only deep dive in certain areas, times, and depths for protection against the unknown. Yes, we did indeed see what we truthfully believed to be a living dinosaur in the flesh close up. Even though plesiosaur are carnivorous and eat fish, it showed no signs of aggression towards us in the deep water and simply ignored us as it swam by, unfazed by our bright lights to see. It wasn't much bigger than a smaller elephant, which, when it belongs to a creature like this, is still shocking. I always imagined aquatic dinosaurs being so much larger, but it might have been a young one. We are currently advocating for bigger budgets to do even deeper diving missions, to explore regions and parts left to the ocean. We want to unveil to the world the undiscovered to mankind. Sorry for the long email. You'll hear from me again if we truly do capture great evidence. About two years ago, I went with a friend, let's call him John, on his boat out to sea for a little vacation with him and his wife. Our plan was to sail up and down the west coast for weeks at a time. He's a lover of the ocean and understands that there is more to the sea than we can comprehend. He's seen an abundant amount of life out there. Seals, sharks, octopus, all sorts of sea life. He's gone deep diving, but has also caged dive with sharks. The man is fearless and a relentless sailor. His respect and love for the sea comes from his father who took him out to sea all the time as a younger boy. Me? Not so much. I used this vacation as an opportunity to get away from my life troubles for a while, since at the time, I was at rock bottom and was going through a really rough patch in my life with addiction and bad people. Moving forward, we're out on the coast, probably no more than 10 miles out at sea, when something extremely large goes underneath the boat. I don't know anything about sea life, and I don't claim to. I mean, I know the basic stuff, but I couldn't tell you about whale migrations or anything like that. I am the farthest thing from a marine biologist. My first thought was that it was a whale swimming underneath the boat. The boat got rocked pretty hard. I guessed at the time whatever went underneath us must have just bumped into us by accident. My friend comes out of the cabin, excited, telling his wife to come out here that there's a whale close by. So my guess obviously wasn't that wrong. I trusted my friend because he knows what he's talking about when it comes to being out at sea. So I quickly ran to the starboard side to see what I thought was going to be a whale emerging to the surface in the distance. It wasn't. We didn't see anything other than a bunch of bubbles a little ways off. Right when John was about to say, get my binoculars, to his wife, this large serpent-like body rises out of the water, away from the ship, and goes back down again. When I say large, I'm talking large. Capital L, font size 72. There was no head that rose beyond the water and no tail. It just looked to be part of the body. John and I were in total awe at the size of this serpent-like body that appeared out of the water. I'll tell you exactly what I remember. The under part of it was white, while the top part 
was a green-gray scale pattern. The weather outside was perfectly clear and sunny. I, we couldn't have asked for a better day or time to have a sighting like this. There was no mistaking what we were seeing. The body portion of whatever animal this belonged to was much longer than that of a whale, so I want to clear that up right now. The girth of this part of the body we witnessed was larger than that of a whale, to which some might be in disbelief, but when I say large, I do mean it. What I'm guessing happened is that whatever this was must have come underneath our boat, heading off into the west, and as it got further out, my assumption is that it probably dove downwards underwater, and as a result, part of its body curved and coiled above the surface before submerging again. If I'm not being clear enough, just imagine a colossal sized sea serpent that we saw part of the body of. I'm going to try and give you an estimate of girth and potential length, but I can't be so sure. Because we were out at sea, I have no way to measure how far away or how far close we were to it. I'm going to go ahead and guess maybe 70 yards out. I will say it was close enough we got a look at it for a few seconds as it appeared out of the water and then submerged again. When you see something like that, it's hard not to be in total awe of the size of something like that living in the water. I know it was visibly larger all around in girth than that of a whale. You could just tell by the sight alone. I learned from John that blue whales are around 13 meters in girth, and this was maybe double that. Length could be very hard to judge. Bear with me, but it could have possibly been 60 feet minimum, very easily. With how large that part of the body that came out, and how serpent-like it was, it would make total sense for it to have a much more elongated body. It could have been more than 100 feet in length. We don't know. We didn't see. Whatever it was thought to have been large enough to rock the boat as hard as it did by just barely bumping into us from underneath. We were anchored at the time of this event, and it was roughly 2-3pm to 3 PM in the afternoon. Because we were anchored, nothing really happened. We didn't drift off or anything like that. We would have though had we not been anchored because of the sheer force of this bump. The large amount of bubbles we saw right before part of the body surfaced was an immense amount of air escaping to the surface. So it's possible that whatever this was, like a whale, isn't 100% aquatic in its bio makeup. I'm just throwing a bunch of speculation out here based on what me and John saw. I spent some time talking all this over with John on the phone before sending this to you, and so a lot of the knowledge of whales, measurements, etc. and whatnot are mainly from him. Because, like I said, my knowledge is so minimal of sea life. John's wife never came out of the cabin at the time, and I think she was doing something for John, like getting his binoculars, so she didn't witness it. Only John and I did. I saw an unknown kind of fish, with tentacle-like tendrils protruding on its back, the size of a small person covered in dark green and black scales with a tapered face and bright yellow eyes. This was during my vacation to Japan I had years and years ago. I was with my friend Akira, who spoke fluent Japanese, sightseeing and going all around the country to see the beauty Japan held. We were visiting Lake Yamanaka. My Japanese friend was doing some photography work on different sightings throughout the area. Lake Yamanaka is gorgeous in every way, it is one of the five lakes around Mount Fuji, I'm told. I only know these things because my friend Akira had told me all this before taking me out sightseeing. Akira, who was doing photography at the time, was setting up her tripod. That's when close by us came this large fish, bigger than we could have both ever imagined. It came up right to the surface, just underneath the water. It was clear as day, and you could see nearly every detail of this fish as it nearly broke surface. It almost glided across the water effortlessly. It was so graceful. It was amazing. You could make out every distinction in the details I just explained. As it moved past us, you could see these long tendrils at the end of its tail that dragged behind it by 10 or more feet. Long, thick tendrils that looked very reminiscent of tentacles. I don't know if they moved or had any use or what not, but it was an incredible sight to witness. There were a bunch of other people on the path next to us watching this as it went on. 
This fish swam up near us and then veered off and kept going while staying right underneath the surface in full view. People were astonished, pointing their cameras and snapping pictures. I had never seen a fish like this in my life. My friend Akira, who, like I said, is Japanese and spoke it fluently, also spoke good English and told me that everybody else was just as surprised as us. She did not recognize such a fish ever before. Sorry my story is so short. There isn't much more to it. I had tried to Google a fish in Japan or in lakes with a similar description, but I could not come up with much. Maybe there are just certain fish that belong to certain areas of the world.